Bovard. No, he's going to try another car here. I'll bet he's going to jump out and see if he can get into this. I'm not sure, as I mentioned before, if he's desperate enough to where he's going to try to carjack somebody or not, but uh, it would seem that that's going to be the next step because he's not having any luck getting into any of these cars, and I can't understand where the police officers are. I hope we're uh, on the phone to somebody trying to get them here because he's been within about a three- or four-block area within the last, oh, five to seven minutes or so just roaming around this neighborhood. Well, he's inside that car. He's inside there. Oh, come. The police are coming. The police are coming. We're widening out just a little bit. Widening out just a little bit. Police coming down there. The police are after him. Oh, now it's going to get. Now he's going down Lake Washington Boulevard, which is very crowded right now. He's going to pull right across the intersection without slowing down. He is now southbound Lake Washington Boulevard. Police now in hot pursuit. Hopefully they can stop this guy before he runs over somebody. You, everybody that knows downtown Kirkland at all knows a lot of pedestrian traffic as well as vehicle traffic down here. And this guy is not going to stop. He's already proven that a number of times. He's all but run people off the road. Uh, police right behind him now. There should be probably police officers coming from the other direction. I'm going to be watching for that as well. But uh, this guy does not want to stop. This is probably not going to end very well, Steve Margo. Right now, I would estimate that he's somewhere in the neighborhood of 50, maybe 55 miles an hour. Not extremely fast, but considering the type of street that we're on here, you know, basically a residential, although it's an arterial of sorts. Now he's up to maybe 65 or 70. He's in his increasing speed. We're approaching the Carillon Point area right now. He's in the turn lane, as you can see. He's narrowly missing a number of people. There's. <laughs> I hope this uh, doesn't turn out to be what I think it might be. He's coming to a busy intersection right by Carillon Point now, blowing through that intersection. Fortunately, oh, now he's making a turn. I'm going to have to maneuver here to stay on top. And police still hot behind him within about to 10 or 12 or maybe 8 car lengths behind him. Okay. Yeah, now he's back northbound, Steve. Kirkland, I can't remember the name of this street, but it's uh, the one that parallels Lake Washington Boulevard just to the east. And uh, fortunately, it looks like a number of people that are going the opposite direction are seeing what's developing ahead of them and are pulling off to the side. I can see uh, people doing that for some blocks ahead. Fortunately, traffic coming toward him because uh, you can see he's in the wrong uh, lanes. Uh oh, now he's coming up to a corner. Another police officer, he's going to be head on right here at this corner. I don't know what's going to happen here. Oh, he went by him. Yes, there's a, there are there are a number of Margo, there are a number of police officers at the intersection here, both cars and motorcycles, and he just goes right on through there. Look at that. Actually, yeah, actually, Steve, uh, eastbound direction up toward you. You're right. It's going to be up toward 70. If you're absolutely right, coming up to a very busy intersection here, a little shopping center. Clear over in the opposite lanes here. Now approaching a bus. Uh, busy intersection here. He does have again the well something of a green light. The green or the uh, turn light is on. Now he's going to make a left turn. It appears, and continue now in the northbound direction again. He's got at least three police officers on his tail, including one motorcycle police officer over in the wrong direction again. Oh, he's coming! Oh, he's coming up with some cars here. Narrowly missing a few of these vehicles, as you can see here, live chopper seven. This is just unbelievable. We haven't seen anything like this around here for a long, long time, fortunately. You're absolutely right, Steve. Heading back toward uh, what would be 85th that comes over the hill from Rose Hill down into Kirkland. Now he's in the, oh, another police officer. He's going to hit head on here. Oh, goes by him. Now through the intersection. He's going to be approaching 85th, which is, of course, the very busy uh, road that goes up from downtown Kirkland up over the Rose Hill area and down into Redmond. This guy just does not want to stop. He's... Oh, what's he going to do now? More police officers here through the intersection. Wrong way again. Now he's going up the hill in the eastbound direction. This is 80 up toward uh, 405 and Rose Hill.
Yeah, Marco, he's no, uh, he's no beginner at this. I mean, he looked up and actually saw us from overhead. Didn't seem to deter him whatsoever. I guess I wouldn't expect him to, really, but not uh, not even, uh, didn't even slow him down. He attempted the two or three cars, as we saw there, until he finally got one that he was able to quickly hotwire and get into just as the police arrived. That was the amazing part. Okay, now the police, uh, the inspection picked up the motorcycle officer is the first one behind him. He's now entering northbound 405 here in the downtown Kirkland area. Uh, this will be real interesting to see what happens now. Got him there. Oh. Still moving. Another car. Oh, he's going to get out of his way. He is on the shoulder now, Steve, as you can see. Very busy. We're in rush hour traffic, of course, now. It's not quite as thick of traffic as I would expect to see this time of night, which is probably a good thing. Gives him a little more room to maneuver because he is going to continue to maneuver. This guy is not going to stop until something bad happens. And I, I anticipate that that might be an accident of some sort. Hopefully nobody, uh, no innocent person is hurt. The police are actually taking it fairly carefully considering how fast this guy is going, which is now what I would estimate to be a good 80 miles an hour on the shoulder. Is he going to take the exit here? He might be taking the 124th. Nope, he's not. He's going to continue straight on through, again, still on the shoulder at 120, make that 116th. The next intersection will be 124th at Totem Lake here. Yeah, the first car that he was in, the one that we first uh, found down in the Kirkland area, was the, the silver Honda that uh, had been reportedly had been reportedly involved in an accident involving uh, trying to run over a police officer. We haven't pinned all that down yet because of everything else that's been going on here. But that car, uh, I don't know if the car was stolen or the plates were stolen, but the uh, plates did not match the car, of course. Yeah, now he's uh, continuing northbound on 405 or just north of Totem Lake. Now he's over in the carpool lane. Some of the people that uh, are paying attention in their rearview mirror are seeing him coming and actually moving out of the way, which is a very bright thing to do. Uh, what's he going to do now? I thought maybe he was going to try to take that uh, turn around there and get into the opposite flow in the southbound direction, but he missed it. Now, if he knows this area, he might know that there's another turnaround coming up here in about another half a mile. We'll see if he tries to take that quickly. That might confound the cops a little bit more, but I think they're probably going to have uh, spike strips up here. I haven't been able to pay much attention to the scan scanners because we've been pretty busy here for the last few minutes, but I suspect that they will try to if they have the opportunity to set up some spike strips and try to stop this guy before he uh, causes some uh, accident or injury. Oh, I only see about three, to be uh, honest with you. There's a one motorcycle officer that's in the carpool lane right now, and two, uh, looks like maybe Kirkland police officers behind him. He's now over on the right-hand side shoulder, which you can see. I, I'm wondering if maybe they will try the pit maneuver. You've all seen and heard of that on TV, of course, where they pull up alongside the rear fender of that car and tap it and try to spin it out. I haven't uh, seen them obviously try to attempt that yet just because they haven't really had the opportunity. Now he's taking the exit up here at uh, oh, 160th. Yeah, I think that is 160th there. And what's he going to do here? Is he going to get back on the freeway? Nope, he's going to go He's going to go around the, the, over the overpass here. Uh, what's he going to do? He's going to get boxed in. No, maybe not. People are getting out of his way. Very, very smart people. Oh, now he's going to make a 180 there. What's he... This guy is desperate. Steve, I haven't seen anything like this except the things we watch on, uh, I got shit there. <laughs> but now what's he going to do? Oh, he's, 
He's just pushing cars out of the way. If they get in his way, he's just pushing. Okay, now he's entering back northbound again on 405 here. Oh, yeah, there he goes. He's... He's up again to about 70, 80 miles an hour or so. Now there's a big truck up here. If this trucker knew what was happening, he could pull over and stop this guy or at least uh, get his attention. Okay, he's coming up to the Bopple Woodville Interchange right now. If he continues, he's going to take highway, what is this, 522. Uh, let's see, is he going to take, uh, he's going to take 522, but it looks like he's going to end up going in toward downtown Bopple. Now that's going to, that's going to be interesting. Okay, no problem. I'm going to turn left here. You're clear. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, if we can get word to uh, other police agencies now approaching the downtown Bothell area, he'll be. Uh, I don't see any police in close pursuit at the moment there. I don't know if he realizes it or not because he's still making some pretty daring moves here. Going by the park and ride, just barely made it by that bus. What's he going to do now? He's going to continue on down. He's approaching the main intersection downtown Bothell. Uh, oh, there he is into the parking lot, the, the park and ride parking lot there, I believe that is. Is he going to try to jack another car here or is he just, no, there's an exit. Here. It might put him on the uh, surface streets in the downtown area of Pavel. He's going to be pretty difficult to find if he can get the side streets, except he can't get away from us because we're going to stay on top of this guy. Did he get out of the car? I can't tell. Oh, there's a police officer pulling up right in front of him. It's, yep, it's underway again. Okay, now he is uh, southbound. I'm not certain of the name of this street, but he's going to end up in a Thank you, I'm going to make a tight turn here. Okay. Got you there, Mark. Okay, where is he at? He's, yeah, Steve, he's stuck now. If the police can get here, this doesn't go anywhere. This is a parking lot at the uh, golf course here, right around along the Sanamic He doesn't need a road. I, don't, I was going to say, I don't know how he's going to get out of here, but I guess he's trying to prove to us that uh, this is no problem for him. He's just going to continue cross country here. Thank you. Okay, now he's on the golf course. He's, uh, is he going to turn around here? No, he's going to go through that fence, right through the fence. Look at that. Now, you talk about being desperate. This guy is desperate. I wonder why he's trying to get away. I mean, other than the fact that, that uh, he has carjacked a couple of cars, or at least stolen a couple of cars. So let's run across the uh, greens and the tees down there, mess those up, down a hill. I, I, this is just unbelievable, Steve. This is starting to rival some of the L.A. stuff we've seen over the years. I believe you're right. I, I believe you're right. Right along the Sammamish Slough, just near downtown. Well, he's going to get back onto a road here. Unbelievable. He's going to find one, and I, I think this is the extension of 100 that comes out of Kirkland that comes over here to uh, 527. He's got to go through a fence there. There he is. He's back on the road. Now he's up. Oh, what's he going to go? He's going to head south, and I think this is 100, or turns into 100, heading into to, uh, downtown Kirkland. 
Keep an eye on him, Joe. I gotta make a turn here. Let him come underneath us. Let's see where he goes. 